Hello everyone, my name is Larseth, and it feels very good to say this. Uh, welcome back to Europa Universalis 4, and uh, thank you for uh, starting to watch this new campaign of mine. So, another good thing has happened, and that is today, uh, Mandate of Heaven, the new expansion for EU4 has just come out. And it only seemed fitting that as the expansion uh, is evolved sort of around um, many parts of Eastern Asia, that we should probably, you know, play someone in there. So, as you can see, we're going to be playing as Korea, and we are going to primarily be going for... Let's try and find it. I mean, there'll be plenty of new achievements, so, like, enact a golden age as an empire. There's plenty of other achievements we could probably go for. Um, but the main one I will probably want to try and go for is this one, chosen one. So, as Korea, own or have a subject own all Shinto, Confucian, and Buddhist provinces in the world. So, if we pop over to religious, uh, you can see that's basically all of this. Uh, it's, it's all of Japan, all of uh, Ming, essentially. All, I think, is this, does this come under it? Uh, where is it? I think it this is included, and also down here. So it's most of this area. So it'd be quite a, a war-heavy campaign, I guess. Um, but that could be... Uh, I mean, obviously Ming is the, the big thing we have an issue with, and they are actually probably, I guess, the main focus of this expansion, um, in that they've sort of got a load of new uh, uh, mechanics associated with them. However, our first port of call is Korea, uh, will be to invade a lot of the uh, Jurchen tribes up here and then maybe make our way across here. At the moment, Japan is far too strong to take alone because they've got all these little daim I think it's daimyo. Is this, that's how it's pronounced. I'm probably butchering that as I normally do. Um, and basically, whoever is um, Shogun, I think it is, uh, can call all of them into a war. So, uh, basically, you attack one, they all attack you. So, <laughs> so we won't be going there for a while unless uh, something spectacular happens. We will probably first be going for Janzu. Just because it's the most sensible option. So, to do that... I was, we basically need to find somebody to ally us. Um, as you can... Actually, this is probably another thing worth looking at. The, ooh, a lot of the reputational, uh, not reputational thing, the diplomatic things has changed because of course now the diplomatic macro builder is available. I have not played on the PTR, so I don't actually know where it is. Uh, that seems all the same. This is all different, um, slightly. Ooh, is that another button? Reduce inflation. So that button's moved, hasn't it? That's that's not the same place. Declare bankruptcy. Okay, that's a new button. Raise war taxes. Again, so they've made a few new buttons in this area by the looks of it. Uh, that looks similar. Uh, that's the same. Ideas. Actually, we'll quickly go over our ideas. So the first one, Korean ideas. Um, tech cost minus 5%. That is awesome. Uh, because what we're going to be doing is going for a military advantage over Ming, because they get a minus... They have basically a bit of a crap military. They get a minus 5% discipline, I believe, unless that's been changed, um, to their military. So all you need to be is, like, one or two techs ahead of them, and you can... Well, even one, you can theoretically dominate them. So that is really good. It's actually, before I forget, we are going to go for our national focus as military straight away, because we also... Korea starts off with a really good ruler, 655. It's very good. Fortunately, you pay for that by having a bit of a crap air, but hopefully our ruler doesn't die for a very, very long time. Anywho, back to ideas. Stability cost modifier. That's always a good thing. Never a bad thing. Uh, production efficiency plus 10%. Money. Um, I don't know what actually trade good we generally produce. Uh, it doesn't seem to be... I mean, there's a tea. Chinaware. Okay, so some some valuable things. Uh, what else? Uh, ship durability plus 5%. That's good because what we're going to be trying to do is actually have a little bit of a decent navy. Because if we want 
if we want to stand any chance of beating Japan, we need to have a good navy. So that means actually building a military navy as opposed to just trading, which is what I normally do. National manpower modifier plus 10%. Again, always a good thing, never a bad thing, because manpower, especially as a smaller nation, tends to be sort of the, the limiting factor. You can't continually go to war if you don't have manpower. Idea cost minus 10%, in the same vein as the tech cost minus 5%, that just makes it, you know, that sort of solidifies the idea that you go for a military advantage over, over Ming. I mean, that Ming is essentially our biggest rival. So that, and then last but not least, uh, national tax modifier plus 10%, which again, always a good thing, never a bad thing, because more money is brilliant. And Korean traditions, minus 10% construction cost, domestic trade, power plus 25%. And when we finished it all, infantry combat ability plus, plus 10%. So that's actually pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with all of that. Um, I can't think of a bad thing out of any of those, to be honest. Um, so regarding Ming, um, it's a bit weird. Because technically speaking, like previously, previous to this expansion, there are like we could at this point ally Ming um, and go after Zhanzu um, and sort them out. However, now in this expansion, Ming starts off, I don't know whether we can see from this. There we go. Um, you can have tributary states. Um, so basically all of the states in this list basically have to give Ming money. Um, actually, no, it's not just money. It can be money, monarch power or manpower. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's not a military, it's like in no way a military alliance. It's just literally a money, it's almost like a, the the sort of lunch, uh, the lunch break bully demanding your money or something like that. Uh, Ming basically saying, hello, puny little uh, Hesenwe or Korea or Korchin, give us all your money uh, or manpower. And they're entitled to, given how big they are. However, um, there is one way I mean, what we're going to try and do by letting, uh, I can send, oh, sorry. I have to wait one month before I can send any diplomats. But what we will do is see whether that tributary thing counts in any way as a military alliance. I don't think it will. Otherwise, what we can do, because basically Ming have a buff called Mandate of Heaven. I don't think there's any way of seeing it. But they do. They have a buff called Mandate of Heaven, which basically is it's very important for them. Either if you maintain the Mandate of Heaven, if you don't know what it is, um, the Mandate of Heaven, I'm probably going to butcher this, in real life is the idea that the Emperor of China um, or the, the leaders of China are ruling fairly by divine right, essentially, um, sort of. And when their rules start failing, that's because they've lost the Mandate of Heaven. Thus, the name of the expansion. Yay! Um, so, basically, Ming get bonuses to, like, a national unrest and stuff like that when they have the Mandate of Heaven. As soon as they lose it, things go very bad. They get, like, plus... It becomes more expensive for them to buy stability, and they also get plus 10 unrest, I think. Like, nationwide, national unrest. Which is a lot. So... One way you can do that, like you could sort of fudge it a bit, because you could see they're on zero stability at the moment. So what I could do is get a royal marriage with them. And then if I insult them, that should bring our their opinion of me below zero, at which point they should cancel the royal marriage. And if you don't have full diplomatic ideas selected, cancelling a royal marriage will drop, will cost you one stability and a few prestige, I think. Um, and then as soon as that is one of the things for the Mandate of Heaven, is that if they drop below one, zero prestige, they lose the Mandate of Heaven. So that is a, a way of sort of provoking Ming Pocalypse. Um, and it's much easier to do that if you sort of start off friendly. Otherwise, you know, most people wouldn't be able to get the. Uh, royal marriage with them. So we might try and do that. Um, so what we're going to do first is obviously see whether we can use them to beat upon Janzu. Um, before we click play though, I mean I've been talking for like 10 minutes, so I should probably shut up and do something. Um, Barks, let's send them and protect trade. 
in Nippon. Yeah, Nippon. And we will rename this one Nippon. Um, what else do we want to do? So this is a nice, so we got cogs. This, this is a nice navy, so we're going to try and keep this navy and maybe make it a little bit bigger. Uh, we got a few spaces, three spaces, um, so that'll probably be a few more galleys, I imagine. Um, one, two, three. Definitely build some more galleys um, to fit out this navy. Um, good. What else? So what is our... Ooh, we're on the wrong view. Um, lovely. Okay, they Ming extract sixteen tribute from us, and our liberty desire is thirty percent. Hmm. Okay. See, if you notice, relative power to Ming is actually quite high. Um, and that is because Ming really isn't. It looks powerful, but they really aren't. Especially if they use the Mandate of Heaven. Like they're terrible at military stuff. Anywho, moving on. Uh, what? Ooh, this is all changed, doesn't it? Oh, they've even added a cavalry to infantry ratio. So this is how many cavalry to infantry you can have before you get that malice, I, su I suspect. Oh, I love that. This all looks nice. It's very nice and shiny. Um, so what did, what was I after? Um, my land force limit, 15. So I can I need a few more troops. Um, I've got 9,700 manpower, but I probably will need these troops. So let's get us... Um, some troops, some more uh, infantry, sorry, and a some cavalry. Uh, missions. Um, conquer uh, this province there. I will take that. Um, that's great. Too few rivals. Janzu and Haiji. Again, I don't even remember if anyone watched my failed... Um, Manchurian candidate uh, campaign, but I could not pronounce most of these things for to save my life. So again, I apologize if I'm butchering it Right, we do have diplomats. So it's probably oh, is there anything else has changed here harmonize with religion? Provinces with harmonized religions are tolerated as if they were confusion Confu confusion confusion, okay, so tolerance of the truth safe, so we want to keep sort of a Presumably a high harmony. Okay. Lovely, that makes sense. Um, where is this? Is there a... Oh, is it here? There we go, diplomatic. So, we can... Neighbouring countries, threatening countries. So, this is the new Diplo builder. Basically, you can get... Your this is where you can control most of your diplomatic actions from essentially and it is amazing. Oh god It looks brilliant. So like especially if you're in the HRE and You don't want to forever be micromanaging all of your um, Diplomats like improving relations you can just pop them in here neighboring countries or whatever and they'll just bounce between them Top them up keep them going. You never have to bother. It's fabulous Um and yeah, so like proclaim guarantee and it'll show you all the countries you can proclaim a guarantee over. Cancel tributary, Ming, uh, dynastic actions, Ming. Okay, that's good. Improve relations. Um, I At the moment, I'm not going to, mic I'm going to micromanage it at the moment. To be honest, there's nobody I really want to improve relations with. Maybe Oirat for the moment. Let's improve relations with Oirat. And because a lot of these we're going to want to go to war with, if I'm honest. Um, Korchin are a bit too close. Because they'll. Yeah, because Oirat have got Mongolia as a vassal, I believe. Yes, they do. So that actually seems okay. If we could get Oirat as an ally, that would be really nice. Oh, we should probably look at this age stuff. So the the ages is a new feature in this expansion. There's four different ages you can see down here, and they basically expect certain people, certain nations to do certain things. I mean, and when you complete, once you get, a, basically, you can get buffs for completing a number of these things. And once you do it, you could start a golden era, which gives you all of these bonuses, which is very nice. Um, it seems a little biased though 
to me personally because it seems like there are going to be certain nations who are like dead shoe-ins to get a lot of these things and other nations are just never going to stand a hope now. So that makes it a little bit strange to me. Maybe that's intentional. Like in terms of Age of Discovery, you're sort of expecting, you know, Spain, Portugal, maybe France, Britain, Great Britain or England um, to do, you know, a lot of uh, Discovery. Who knows? So we'll see what we could do in there. I mean, Discover America, Control Centers of Trade. That's doable. Large city, maybe doable. Yeah, how much, what's our capital currently got? Uh, where are you? Oh, it's only got 10. That, that sucks. Okay, never mind, we're not going to be doing that. Um, have at least five vassals. Probably not going to happen just yet. Own provinces on two different continents. No, humiliate, rival. That might happen, but we're probably going to be wanting lots of stuff. Ooh, I completely missed this. So this is the new mechanics I was talking about related to Ming, and I haven't seen any of this yet at all. Because again, I didn't play any of the beta. I've had no access to it until today. Um, only the Emperor can enact a decree. So it's basically similar to the HRE, but they... Okay. So basically, yeah, it's similar to the HRE. So the Emperor of China um, gains or loses um, mandate growth based on presumably how many tributaries there are in relation to how many there are not. And how many there are not, I would assume, means people who are bordering them. And then you can get... Celest you can enact celestial reforms... And you can get a look, bunch of buffs, basically. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that is all of the stuff for this expansion that we've gone through. Like, general large features. There's probably a few other bits and pieces in there that I've missed. Um, let's quickly... We've got one trader free. So, one of them... Where is one of them? He's there. Um. E. I'm going to collect trade in... Beijing, I think, um, just because this we can't filter trade from over here, so we're going to have to essentially maybe pick up a, an extra duck or so there. I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, right, I think we are actually ready to press play, amazingly. Is there it worth improving relations with anyone else? Maybe let's try Daviet. Um, and who else? Basically, I, I would quite like to find people who don't necessarily like Ming. That would be quite nice. So let's do all that. I remember, we're just waiting until the 11th of... Ooh. Yay, construction cost minus 10%. Uh, we're we'll waiting until the 11th. Right, so now we should... I've made a slight mistake. Um... Damn it. I have to wait another month. I didn't have, I didn't have any diplomats left. Uh, right, so can we do... Okay. Okay, that's fine. So we can't do anything. Ming don't help us at all. So actually, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to raw marriage, raw marry Ming. I get a queen consort. And then I'm going to insult them. And we'll see how this goes. Because it might be that they just turn... I better I try this now than try it later and fail miserably. Because what I'm thinking is, um, like, what could happen is I could insult them and they might actually take that literally and go to war with me. Who knows? Um, I think that's all of our troops together. Right. Let's bring those together. What sort of tech advantage... I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. What sort of tech advantage do I have over... Let's split these guys up. One there and one there. Over, um, whoops, Janzu. So we're the same tech in every way. Annoyingly, they, they haven't actually... Ooh, they're at war with Korchin and Janzu, which means, guess what? I'm going to war with Korchin and Janzu. So I probably want... I'm going to put my heir as a general, because he's a bit pants. And I'm also going to put... get a new general myself. Um... I'm going to call back person from 
this place, who I'm not going to pronounce because I will butcher it horribly. Um, quarantine, ooh. No, quarantine the point and let them die. Uh, influence is fine. Right, so we can instantly, because they're, they're in war with a lot of people, um, conquest, take that province. So we're not going to bother calling Corchin in. Uh, who's got siege? You've got one. You've got one. Okay, so it makes no difference. Okay, so what I'm going to do, now that we've just started, we've got straight to war, um, and Ming are actually helping us, essentially. Doing almost what we wanted them to do anyway. We just need to make sure that they don't go and take this province, which is what we want. Or either of these. Um, but yeah, I will end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.